Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here with an unboxing. This one comes from roachcrossing.com from Kyle Candillion. Now, those of you who have watched the channel a lot know that I can't keep roaches, so you know it's not roaches. Not the first creature that I have obtained from Kyle. My pseudoscorpions come from Kyle. If you want to check out um, some videos about my pseudoscorpions, you can do that right up in the corner there. Some of my isopods come from Kyle as well. He's been working with isopods for a very long time, but this package is not isopods. This is going to be a pretty short unboxing, but I do want to give a shout out to my patrons at Patreon. Really appreciate all that you do. Patreon is a great way to help make sure that creators that you enjoy can keep doing what they're doing and keep improving what they're doing. And that's what I do with the uh, money that you send if you become a patron. And if you'd like to become a patron, help Aquarium X Pets move forward and grow and do more interesting things, check the link that I'll put at the bottom of the video or in the description. All right. Like there's plenty of insulating paper. And there's a deli cup. The deli cup we've all been waiting for. And these, I don't know if you can see them very clearly yet. These are an arachnid known as harvestman. These are Vonones sei or Looks like there's something else written there. But Bryceville, Bryceville is the locality from which they were collected. Okay. So let's take a quick look at these little arachnids. Get nice and close. These are very unusual arachnids. They're related to the giant harvestman, also known as Daddy Longlegs. But as you can see, they're built quite differently. Their legs, quite a bit different, totally different genus uh, from the daddy long legs we're familiar with. The coloration is different. Their habits are quite different. One of the interesting thing about the habits of this species is that they're communal. And uh, as you can notice here, and this is something that uh, Peter pointed out in his recent video about harvestmen, they use uh, one of their pairs of legs kind of a lot like uh, a vinegaroon or a tailless whip scorpion does. They use them as very much as sensory organs, which is kind of fascinating. Another cool thing about these guys is that they fluoresce in black light. So we'll be demonstrating that at the end of the video. But now let's get them into their enclosure. The enclosure, as you can see here, is set up very much like an isopod enclosure. They do tend to thrive in very similar habitats. They will actually eat some of the same foods that isopods eat. Uh, they will go after fish food pellets, for example. So I'll be offering them some of these, since the uh, seashell food dish. They need hides that allow them to be kind of high off the substrate so that they can molt. And they are also opportunistic predators. So they will hunt fruit flies, springtails, and so on. I've had some springtails going in this enclosure for a while to make sure they have uh, a ready food source. And I'll also offer them some fruit flies once I get them in here. So let's, uh, let's put them in. One thing that I asked uh, about, I asked Peter at Bugs and Cyberspace this on his recent video on these guys. Um, do they have a repugnatorial fluid like the daddy long legs I'm familiar with. And he said that they don't tend to, he's never been, uh, he's never had that fluid released on him by these. And so, uh, and then I continued to research them and found one reference to them doing it, but you really have to bother them a lot for them to release that. Oh, one just jumped in. I didn't mean to knock it down into there, but apparently I did. But at least it went right into the enclosure. So I saw it land there. That's, that's going to be fine. I'm just going to open this very carefully. Such fascinating little creatures. I, I love the color too. I've been thinking maybe I need to get uh, 
Kyle to come back on and talk about these or maybe even do a panel video. If you'd be interested in seeing a panel video on something like this, get several experienced keepers of this species. So like Kyle Candelian and Peter from Bugs in Cyberspace. Maybe get Invertebrate Dude who's been breeding several species of these on there. I don't know if they'll all be available, but if they were available, would you be into it? Would you be interested in a panel video on this whole group? Not just this species of harvestman, but other species. There are some really fantastic ones out there. Um, now I've gone and done it here. I'm going to put these right here so I can keep track of where I'm putting them. One thing that's nice about them, they can't climb clean, smooth surfaces, much like isopods. They can climb dirty plastic, for example, but as long as you keep the plastic clean and smooth, they can't climb it. So I should be good with this enclosure. Uh, it's got good ventilation. You can clearly see that this is the first time I've ever handled Venonis, and I'm uh, having a little bit of difficulty figuring out how they work, but it won't take long. I'll get used to it. There we go. So now I know there are at least two in the enclosure. Let me get another one out. You can see that some of these are younger. The one the up above looks like it's a little younger. It doesn't have all of the same colors, and it's a little smaller than the other. So I'm going to carefully tip these out into the enclosure here. There we go. You can probably not even see them from where you are. Sorry. I apologize for the camera issue. So that should be four of them so far. Here's another. Let's get a real good close-up on there if we can. Apologize for my skin that needs some moisturizer. Uh, it always does, and I put it on often. But there you go. My hands are in substrate and in water and all kinds of stuff all the time. So there's that. Let's see if I can coax this one onto the egg crate. There we go. So that should be five of them so far. There's a sixth right there. I probably wasn't being quite careful enough with this uh, paper toweling as I should have been, but I wasn't being too rough with it, obviously, because I didn't hurt this one. And just checking to see if there's anybody else adhering to this particular one. Nope, this should be number six. Can I get it to crawl on this? There we go. Such funky little creatures. I love it. Can't wait to get the black light on them. That's six. And here's another paper towel with some more on it. Sweet! There's another one. That's number seven right there. I'll put seven down in there. And there's eight and nine at least. So I only purchased uh, eight, I believe. So there's an extra in there, at least one extra. I'll just double check and make sure not anybody else in there. That should be plenty to get me started, get a starter colony going, which is exciting. That's the idea. As I mentioned, they're quite communal. And uh, as others have mentioned, I think Peter and Kyle have both mentioned somewhere or other that these are an excellent starter arachnid. They tend to there may be some people who, you know, are uncomfortable around them, but in general, these can be a great arachnid to introduce people to arachnids with because they're not venomous. They can't hurt you. They can't, even if they could bite you. I mean, they can't. They don't bite people. Um, one common misconception about a relative of these, the daddy long legs, is that they're the most poisonous spider in the world, but they can't bite you because their jaws are too small or whatever. Um, first of all, they're not a spider. They are related to spiders, but they are harvestmen, not spiders. Another one is that they are poisonous, which means you'd have to eat them or absorb some sort of uh, material from them rather than be bitten by them anyway, of course, because they'd have to be venomous for a bite to take effect in that way. And they're not venomous at all. They do not produce any venom. They don't produce silk. They're not spiders. So there's very little of that um, that declaration that is true. The only thing is that they, they can't harm you. That's the only part of it that's really true. So, very cool. I'm excited to see these guys uh, flourish and breed. And I'm going to give them some fruit flies. But before I do that, I'm going to put the black light on them. Let's see what that looks like. 
Okay, it's been several days since the unboxing at this point. I had to uh, take an opportunity to get into a darker room because the other room wasn't dark enough to show the UV uh, fluorescence very well. So here we go. I'm going to douse the, the light. And here we are with the fluorescent light. Let's see what we can, or sorry, the UV light. We can see what we can see here. Oh, that's cool. You can see the various markings on the Venones are uh, flourishing. That's pretty cool. Let me see if I can find another one. Maybe get a clearer look. Oh, there we go. That's what we wanted to see right there. Looking very cool. I guess I'm disturbing them a little bit, but Looks like the older ones, as others have observed, the older ones seem to fluoresce a little bit more than the smaller ones. How cool is that? Very interesting. Well, that's about it for this unboxing. Thank you for watching. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then, Tap the bell and choose notifications all so you don't miss my next video.